Good afternoon, distinguished audience. At the very outset, I want to thank the convener of authority for inviting me to this annual conference of Sagar Discourse 1.0 and for their gracious hospitality. As it has been already expressed that at this time of the day, it's quite challenging to if you listen to on a subject uh, which matters about law affairs and uh, governance issues, uh, well, I try, I'll try to adjust because uh, also another challenge is many of the uh, items have been already covered in the previous lectures. So, however, it's an honor for me to be here to learn from this distinguished audience. Uh, and also from the speakers. To be frank, I'm not a professor or a lawyer. Well, I am still a student and I keep learning things and also a security practitioner. The initiative taken by Sagar, you know, the Sagar Maritime Summit took place last year. I had the opportunity to come here to sign the MOU with the Indian Maritime University as the first Vice Chancellor of the Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman Maritime University in Bangladesh. I like the word Sagar because it relates to, in Bengali, my mother tongue, I mean language is Sagar, also in the same sea. And it has very beautiful and abbreviation security and growth for all in the region. I mean region, not in a particular country. Maybe number of countries. But when we talk about sea, I personally say the security and economy for all. Why I call security? Because it guarantees the security of our life. If we consider the ocean as a source of water, and in my mother tongue I say Pani is Jibon, that water is a life. So that is the all. Security of our life lies with the oceans or sea and economy. Every conflict, whatever we see around or within the states, between the states, the regions, and across the world, are, there is some point of interest for economy. That's why I think the whole subject is quite interesting and. Uh, here, the aim of or intention of my talk to this August gathering is to discuss some of the issues, actually, of maritime governance, which I just randomly picked up to make a broad brush imaginary painting having title, Challenges of Maritime Governance for Humanity. You know, I come from Bangladesh and it was actually independent in 16 December 1971. Before that, I think uh, as a citizen of that place, our nation was totally sea blind sort of things. Not much of importance given. It was actually opened by the father of the nation, by whose name this university has been also formed, by enacting a law on Maritime Zone and Act. 1974. But again, the country was sort of in hibernation and the present government under the leadership of the current Prime Minister. She has taken a bold step and opened the first maritime university in Bangladesh. Why I'm telling this is because I consider in our vision, our maritime university has something different than other maritime universities. I'm going to say a few words on what we, I mean maritime because generally speaking, you know, when I talk about seas, uh, when I was in my boyhood, I used to hear stories from a grandma or others from the prince looking for the queen and princess across the seven seas and thirteen rivers. So the topic or heading of the students is sea governance. And since I am actually working with academicians and students, at time we have to also discuss on some of the meaningful I mean, thoughts of some words and other things. So, to me, that's 
uh, it is still uncertain that how this seventy was actually named. It was some some in the, some I mean, the literature say that it was in the Greek literature. It was transformed to the English literature in the medieval period. They, because the Greek they used to think about their own I mean, the agency and the, and the seas around them. But the, during the medieval, the name again changed. And after the Europe discovered it, America, the name of the seas again changed. Now there are maybe as many as 50 seas and five oceans. So when I talk about maritime governance, so I try to give my own way of uh, defining things. Just uh, you may differ. So since my university is a maritime, so as a maritime, as a citizen or maritime nation, I think it starts right from the land. Because the brains are within the land and from the coast and in bay, across the seas and deep seas and oceans, even up to Arctic, everything can be covered under the maritime umbrella. It would have been better as uh, the Mr. Arthur Charles Clarke, who was actually a fiction writer in British, he passed in 2008. He actually uh, wondered whether well, it could be also named as ocean. Probably then the talk of our sea blindness would have gone away. I don't want to give much of the statistics which uh, already we know about it. I will try to cover the second part it, because you know the governance is important not only for land, it is important for I mean sea or ocean or maritime areas. So any regime or government's ability to make and enforce rules to deliver services regarding of whether that government is democratic or not. This is actually a, one person he opined, is Mr. Fukuyama. And the governance of maritime and marine space is the management of stakeholder activities of these areas and spaces. Broadly speaking, the issues of maritime governance are intensely complex, overlapping and diverse. It involves different stakeholders who may be locals, nationals or international. So there are certain fundamental elements of governance, like uh, the rule of law, many of us will talk about it, participatory, transparency, consensus-based decision-making, accountability, equitable, inclusive, responsive, and coherent. Coherence is very much important. So things should not just stop after the workshops or seminar. We have to implement it. We have to engage with things, we have to pursue things to happen. I just wanted to draw my own way of uh, framing a conceptual framework for American governance. You can see the parties like national, local, regional and international. And the challenges are we have mentioned, the weak framework, then climate change and others, we have talked about it. The who are the responsible parties, and then uh, the stakeholders, and their uh, opportunities. Then the, uh, the problem of maritime governance are interrelated and needed to be considered as a whole, where all nations should coordinate. And maritime governance is multidisciplinary in nature. They should look for balance of economic activity, social equity, environmental equality, sustainability, maritime safety and security. If we talk about the legal aspect, uh, you know, in every field we talk, like from the social, environmental, economic perspectives, 
and technological and security perspectives, there, uh, I mean, laid down procedures like the unclosed, uh, already discussed about it, has was its own, but it has its own limitations. The 1982 unclosed forms the basis of the modern legal framework for ocean governance. The vast majority of the world's nations have signed on the Antlas, which is known as the Constitution of the World for Oceans. The treaty provides guidelines for how nations use the world issues, seas, and their natural resources. Antlas has already resolved a number of critical age-old issues, though some states have not become part so far. The Convention has changed political geography of the world. There are still threats to the public order at sea, firstly the issue of continued proliferation of excessive maritime claims, mostly resource-based. For example, at the China Sea, there's a well-known case between the Philippines and China. Several unilateral claims show lack of respect for unclosed as they are starting points for other claims on economic, exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf claims. Another problem is claims over unsustainable rocks or reefs in South China Sea or East China Sea that generate their own EZ and continental shelves. The most controversial aspect of the Convention was the regime for deep seabed mining contained in Part 11 and Annex 3. Some of the industrialized states are rightly rejected it. The Convention has been ratified by 168 parties though. The next point is maritime security is crucial to national as well as human security. Drug traffickers, gun runners, and terrorists often use the established sea routes of vulnerable illegal migrants of the journey to their destination to circumvent border controls. The block diagram, uh, or you can say, see that the, the parties to it are the local, state, and the international organizations. And the most important part is the awareness and the education, and which comes then to training part of it. Then comes the policy and strategy, and the actions or operations which we need to do. Out of the several issues, from the security aspect is one of them is the piracy. It's an old issue and its presence could not be stopped over the years. Piracy uh, total number has decreased maybe recently, but you cannot guarantee that. It's a continuous process. Like most of the statistics say that uh, the, uh, in the East Africa and Indian Ocean, they were very much prone to piracy and activities. Threat to marine environment, I think uh, the previous speakers that talked about it. Environment is something which have, we have to give maximum attention. Then the sea level rise, for which we are very much worried about it, most particularly the low lying countries and island countries. This is a picture given, say, from 1880 to 2017. The amount of sea level rise it has shown. So what should be done for maritime governance? We should adopt a holistic approach to all marine and maritime issues, the integrated maritime policy, policy for maritime spatial planning by the states and the regions. Put in place a robust set of mandatory environmental rules to ensure maritime actors use maritime resources sustainably wherever they operate. 
Developed level strategy to boost unsustainable and inclusive blue growth, including blue economy considerations in external policies as regards natural resources, energy, trade development, and security. Put in place national and local strategies to address common challenges and opportunities, collaborating closely with distant countries and stakeholders from all relevant sectors. Develop funds for higher education and research for marine and maritime education, improving cooperation and information sharing and making maritime data publicly accessible. Engage in international and cross-sectoral forums to address the common challenges of ensuring safe, secure, clean and productive sea and ocean worldwide. Focus on well-being and safety of humans for peaceful existence on planet. This is the humanitarian aspect of it. I think uh, this area is much overlooked. On the opening day, the chief guest, he categorically mentioned, and he actually laid down a big canvas with huge uh, I mean the, uh, uh, upper and lower limit, right from the common masses up to the, I mean, the, those who have, who have the, all the things. We have to look into their matters. The humanitarian aspect, just for an example, uh, if we take the case of recent um, eviction or killing of citizens by Myanmar and due to their own purpose, the way they have actually driven them out, almost half, more than half a million people, they have no space to go. They are either going to the water, some of them already, maybe they have lost their lives, some actually given shelter by our present government. And uh, these common people say that this, this great humanitarian job we have done. But you have to consider that if we talk about the region, that how it can actually address the future of this ocean of, of the region. It could, it could be a security threat, it could be anything. Health security, economic security, all these subjects will be affected by these people. Security of education is also a problem. There has to be clear understanding of the specific areas of interest, natural process and dynamics of marine and coastal system, and decision taken considering future implications and effect. People around the target maritime zone, they must be addressed. And participation by all stakeholders, including local administrative bodies. Use of appropriate instruments, say, Research, education, technical solution, legal basis, economic support needs. Human capacity at all levels improved through comprehensive maritime education, multidisciplinary training. It's so much important that when I started working for this my university, in the first department I saw, uh, opened on March and postgraduate level was maritime law. It was very difficult to really get maritime law. We have many lawyers, but we have so much of maritime issues. Only inland river port, uh, I mean, uh, I mean port, the marine port, they have more than 15,000 cases pending, but not a proper maritime law. So we felt urgency, and the mission here is one of them is also looking for opportunities to share ideas and look for the resource persons. Although I have already connected with you with 10 world American universities, uh, including many other countries also from this region. So, education and training, they have no alternative. Conflict resolution mechanism and public policy making is another area. We must address these things and maybe we can have joint workshops and to train our people how to address these issues. Any regime who wants successful governance would have to acquire some guidance like political will to govern or control, rule of law, set standard of principle, in possession of maritime policy, 
for all FS of the nation at sea. Some sort of military command of the sea and regulatory proceedings when requested. So finally, I just would uh, conclude like challenges of for maritime and ocean governance are numerous and each one is important. In order to govern activities at sea, we need to set certain standards. We need to establish rule of law to govern activities by providing broad orders and create obligation and responsibility. This will aim to establish security, stability, order, peace, and minimize injustice. Health of UNCLOS and other legal framework is important, but there are areas of uncertainties and challenges to some particular elements of international law which need to be resolved. Best means to resolve issues over resources and their use are more and more interactions and negotiation. We must develop and the skill of the negotiation or the art of negotiation among the, our future leaders. Arbitration, cooperation between stakeholders, memorandum of understanding, agreements, engagements between security practitioners and services are also important to build confidence. Maritime higher education and research are important to develop skilled human resources as we need for the different professions through well-designed educational policies. Here, regional and international cooperation would be required to share resources and information to boost the activity that sea. With that, I would just want to finish it here. Just a few glimpses of the pictures that how the country can uh, just evict their citizens and they are just helpless. Many of them probably underwater now. Uh, just taking some of the pictures, which I have many. My secretary sent me a lot, but I just want to stop it here. Thank you very much.